hospitalized COVID-19 denier has unfortunately succumbed to the virus Monday. Now, the woman, Veronica Wolski, was a prominent Illinois booster of QAnon. So it's QAnon. Uh, she had recorded herself hanging pro-QAnon banners over bridges and uh, being anti-mask. So she would flout mask laws in stores. Not really laws, but of course, mask mandates. Uh, and then would claim, would say that, oh, I have never once worn a mask. And then as often as ones who test their assumptions in the face of irrefutable evidence, they find consequences. If only someone had warned them. If only someone had said, masks are effective at controlling the spread of COVID-19. Mm. Uh, so not only did she catch the virus, which ironically QAnon, they believe it's fake anyway, uh, and therefore did not protect herself from wearing the mask or uh, getting the, the devil's needle juice, in her arm, the, you know, the, the, the 5G tracking mark of the beast, 666, you know, uh, yeah, vaccine, yeah, yeah. Well, she didn't do any of that, and she died. But I mean, it seems like a pretty clear-cut case of what happened here. Uh, but wait, hold on. Apparently, her and her QAnon following had specifically demanded the use of anti-parasitic medication, ivermectin. Oh. So now the Daily Beast Will Sommer reported that after she was hospitalized in Chicago two weeks ago with COVID-19, Wolski supporters and QAnon and other far-right groups besieged the medical center with hundreds of phone calls and even some death threats demanding that she receive ivermectin, whose effectiveness as a COVID-19 treatment remains unproven. Uh, so now top QAnon leaders like former Trump National Security Advisor Michael Flynn raised her cause. Pro-Trump lawyer Lynn Wood calling the hospital and demanding that she receive ivermectin shortly be before her death. And of course, the question, of course, is why? Um, it hasn't been shown to be effective against COVID-19. Why give something that's shown to be uh, not effective or even more damaging to somebody's liver, for example, um, for somebody who's already doing incredibly poorly? It doesn't make any sense. Why didn't they call for monoclonal antibodies? I mean, that is an effective treatment for patients with a high risk of progression of the disease, of the virus, which, of course, and look, I don't, even, I, don't, I don't know, maybe they did and maybe it just didn't take. I don't know her specific uh, course of treatments or her case. Hell, I don't even know if her insurance would have covered that or if she had the, the money to be able to cover that. I mean, the average hospital stayed as a result of COVID-19, not free, it's $38,000. And that's if you're lucky enough to survive. It's expensive to get COVID-19 in this country or to get anything in this country. Uh, and so I don't know her medical history. I don't know her comorbidities. I don't know anything like that. Um, and so at this point, look, it's, it's, it's pretty much up to the doctor to determine the best course of treatment, not cultists. And of course, I'm not saying that doctors haven't made mistakes, whatever. But here, here's the thing. Why use something that's un unproven? I mean, it works on worms, sure. It, it works on worms, it works on lice, it you know, works on the, the worms that get in your eyes that cause river blindness. Uh, I mean, that's why it won a uh, Nobel Prize, because it actually helped river blindness. However, again, this doesn't work on a virus. I mean, yes, it also doesn't work on brain worms, apparently. That's one, one worm that it doesn't work on. But like, no. Um, studies have shown so far, and there are clinical trials that are going on in other countries. Uh, there's been pretty high use in India and Brazil. You know what those two things have in common? Uh, for one, they don't have access to the vaccine because of we're hoarding it here in America. And so, of course, understandable, they are taking desperate measures. OK, in those countries and trying pretty much everything they can. They're almost literally throwing everything under the kitchen sink at it. Which is why we need to, of course, release the patent, allow these other countries to get access uh, to vaccines or to be able to make their own vaccines. And so yeah, that's that that's my position on that. But like the other thing they have in common, too. Is they happen to be controlled by fascist right wing leaders. Bolsonaro in Brazil, and of course, uh, Modi in, uh, in India. So th that's another thing, right? 
right wingers and weirdo cures tend to go or, or weirdo treatments, whatever, tend to go hand in hand, honestly. Uh, but okay, as far as the studies have shown so far, ivermectin can have antiviral properties, but so far only at such high doses that it happens to be toxic in humans. So that's why it's ineffective as a treatment. Uh, hey, you know what also kills uh, viruses? Bleach. Setting yourself on fire also could kill the virus, but it's not a good treatment for an obvious reason. Don't do that. So that's why I have to add, what really is the best treatment for COVID-19 is actually, is, is actually prevention. Just don't, just don't get it. Do your best to, to avoid it. And again, this is, this is more of common sense, and it's, of course, not 100% foolproof, of course. Uh, but generally, if you get the vaccine, you wear a mask, you're in an area with uh, high uh, levels of transmission, socially distance, and try to stay home as much as possible. I get that it sucks, but you're safe. And here's the thing. Uh, if you try to avoid risky behaviors, it tends to help you. Again, not in every circumstance, of course. You can still do all the right things and end up with a COVID-19 infection. We've seen that happen a handful of times. But generally, you tend to be more safe when you avoid some of those more risky behaviors with the pandemic that is ongoing. It's almost like uh, avoiding STIs. You use a condom you need to, to avoid STIs. All right, again, sucks, but at least you're safe, right? You don't wanna get into an accident, uh, okay, well, drive carefully. If you do, use a seatbelt, have an airbag, so that you don't, like, you know, fly out your window and smash into the middle of the pavement. I know if, I know if seatbelts right now were being debated as public policy, there would be a ton of right wingers that are like anti seatbelt. Now, don't tread on me. I don't want seatbelts. Seatbelts are tyranny. There's always, there's always that kind of person. But anyway, again, you don't want the flu, get the flu shot, get the, you know, uh, wear the vac, uh, I'm sorry, wear the mask. You don't want COVID-19, get the COVID uh, shot and, and wear the mask. And if you're wondering, by the way, why the flu has affected so few people since COVID-19, well, I mean, the answer is pretty obvious. People are masking and vaccinating and avoiding risky behavior. That's why the flu virus hasn't been killing as many people and hasn't been going around as much. <laughs> it, it really is, it's simple. It really is simple. So now she didn't follow that advice, which is fairly obvious. Um, and so a lot of right-wing anti-vaxxers and anti-maskers have kind of done the same. And what do you know? They, they keep getting it and dying. It's a weird, weird. It's almost as if there are consequences. Huh, huh. But, but of course, since it is the right wing, since it is QAnon, well, it's never their fault. Obviously, it's always someone else. It's always a conspiracy. In fact, on Monday morning, Wood announced in a post on, a, the, uh, on Telegram, which is vested with the right wing, uh, with, I'm sorry, not with the right wing, but with Nazis, uh, also on the right wing, <laughs> that Wolski had died shortly after midnight and called her death a, quote, medical murder and urged his followers to go to war. Ah, Met medical, me medical murder. Wouldn't that just be murder? <laughs> Med medical, murder's murder. I mean, again, this, this goes back to the uh, discussion about Weirdly enough, I'm going to draw the weirdest parallel you've ever seen, but, but stay with me, okay? Uh, legitimate rape. There's no such thing as a legitimate rape. Rape is rape. Murder is murder. I don't understand how, like, they keep coming up with these super weird, like, it's, it's, not, it's not just apartheid. It's medical apartheid. It's medical murder, as opposed to traditional murder. But you know what? I know, super big brain take, right? Galaxy brain take, even. But are, okay, okay. So now, there's an interesting logical pathway we can take from that. 
Stay with me, okay? So now you're saying for a hospital to deny certain medications, that would be considered medical murder, right? All right. Well, how about, how about this? If the hospital refuses to treat your cancer or give you cancer drugs or give you insulin, for example, if you are diabetic, well, isn't that by extension murder? And therefore, in order to avoid that, just give out medication freely and accessible to everyone. I mean, think about it this way. It, 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 people who gatekeep medication, could they not be considered to be a literal death panel? Let's go, let's expand this logic a little bit further. We're almost there, okay? So now if an insurance company denies you medications because you can't afford it, is that also considered murder? I mean, if you can't afford your insulin, right? If you have to pay money for life-saving drugs, well, that's also murder, right? Because that's medication that could have saved your life, right? Murder, murder. Oh, wow. Uh, y you know what? That kind of makes the case against for-profit healthcare, doesn't it? Because again, this is something, those situations, by the way, not getting your medication and dying as a result of not having things like insulin, diabet uh, you know, uh, medicine for your diabetes and medicine for cancer, treatment for cancer. Well, that, you know, that does happen all the time. 45,000 Americans die every year as a result of lack of health care in this country. Now, they, that wouldn't happen if everyone had health care, if everyone had insurance, if we had universal health care, if we had a single payer system, or if we had a government national health service. Now, do you see QAnon talk about that though? No, no, of course not. No, what they demand is the dewormer. Which again, not proven to work against COVID-19. <laughs> and, and look, the reaction is so incredibly predictable here. Uh, because it, it really does show you that it's not about saving lives. If they actually cared about saving lives, then they would be supporting things like Medicare for All. Uh, but they don't. But they don't. It's not about saving lives. It's not about health care. What this is, is it's a culture war. It's a culture war issue now. And say they, say, they die, uh, say, say they gave her ivermectin, which I don't know if they did or not. I'm assuming they didn't. And she died anyway. Uh, even worse for the case if they actually had given her ivermectin. I don't believe they did. I think there's this, uh, now that I recall, there was a statement that the hospital put out and said, we don't, we don't dispense ivermectin because it's not been approved by the FDA uh, only for, and, and what it has been in, in other countries has been a uh, subject of clinical, clinical trials. So we don't do any of that. But anyway, so say they had given her that and she died anyway. Well, okay, well, then... And, and by the way, I, that would have happened. She would have died anyway. <laughs> but here's the thing. They would have said the same thing. Oh, medical murder. They didn't do it soon enough. They didn't do it quick enough. Or something. And then something, something, deep state, Bill Gates, people who've been vaccinated, they, got this, they spread the spike protein to her. That's what they did. It's the vaccinated people that killed her. Because this is not about reality anymore with people. It's political. It's political identity. And us normal people, normal people don't get it, right? Because we look at that and we're like, well, obviously it's not approved. Not approved. There hasn't been any efficacy that has been shown. And so why are people going to the feed store if they can't get a prescription, which they most likely will not be able to do? So why are they going to the feed store? and accidentally taking doses too big for them and going to poison control uh, because that's what's going on here. That's what's going on here, okay? And so, but here's the thing too. We mask up and vax not because we're liberals. I I'm, look, I'm more left than a liberal. Um, you know, I, I definitely see the appeal of a socialistic model with democracy in the workplace uh, instead of our current authoritarian, you know, structure. Uh, where the CEO and the board kind of lord over us like an unelected king. How un-American, by the way. Didn't we overthrow the king? King of England? 
you know, freedom. I believe in freedom, workplace freedom. Uh, but look, here's the thing. We didn't wear that uh, the, and, and vaccinate because we're of our political identity. I know plenty of conservatives that wear a mask and have vaccinated. And they do it not because it's a political identity, but because it's called protecting yourself. Okay? It, it, and so it's called common sense. And by the way, everyone at Fox News, Tucker Carlson included, has already taken the vaccine. Now, the difference is, of course, that Tucker Carlson doesn't give a damn about you. Neither does Laura Ingram. Neither does Sean Hannity. They just don't. They don't give a damn. It, that's it. And, and, and of course, they'll tell you what they want, you know, what, what you want to hear. And what you want to hear, if you're a viewer of them, is a reason to be selfish and ignorant and a way to own the libs. And QAnon, of course, will go a step further and give you the crazy. The end result, of course, is people like Veronica Wolski, who, have died, who you know, dove right into it and believed all the stuff that she was told, ended up in the hospital, and now she's dead. That's it. That's what killed Veronica stupidity. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.